Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. My king's coming. It all belongs to him. It's not yours. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, this, this, folks, it's settled. There's no question about it. There's no possibility that this will not happen. God Almighty has decreed, Thou art my Son. This day have I begun to thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathens for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. That's going to happen. <clears throat> now David counsels us. How should we respond to the king? Look what he says. Be wise now therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Well, what should we do? Look here. Serve. <coughs> the Lord with fear and rejoice. Everyone in this building that has bowed the knee to Jesus Christ and has asked Him to be your Savior and Lord, you ought to desire and wonder what do you want me to do? How can I serve you, King? I come and I offer you my body. And I offer you my mind. And I offer you my life as humble and, and as meaningless as it is. My sovereign, I offer it to you. David said that's how we should respond to the king. <coughs> you want to stand before the king and give an account one day? Why you wasted your life? Why you never served him? This monarch of such awesome power and authority, you want to approach his throne and goof, he's been goofing off your whole life? It's not very wise. Look what else he said. Kiss the son. Embrace him. If you don't know him as Savior, you better embrace him. You better ask him to be your Savior. Lest he be angry and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Oh, but that's too much of a price to pay to, to give my life and service for Christ. David counsels us as well. Blessed are them, all they that they put their trust. You ask some of the men, women, pastors, Christian workers, faithful church members, you ask them, do you, do you regret serving the Lord with your life? Do you regret doing that? Oh. They'll tell you, I wish I had another life. I could do it again. I wish I would have started for Christ sooner. Oh, we just understood that Jesus Christ is the sovereign king of the world. And you will bow the knee to him. You bow voluntarily now and live for him and serve him and be blessed. Or you reject him. And in the awful day of judgment, you will still bow the knee. And you will still say with your mouth, yes, he is the king of kings. Yes, he is the Lord of Lords. But you feel like a swim. Yes. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall be Lord. <coughs> Why call me Lord? You don't do the things that I say. Why well, want to be in his kingdom? And yet be a rebel. <coughs> Doesn't make sense. When you read your Bible, your Old Testament, you see all these kings being encouraged. They failed terribly.
but the coming king of your mouth. They made some terrible mistakes. The coming king rules in righteousness. They all died and are all no longer there. But the king coming is eternal. And we'll be able to live with him in his kingdom. His kingdom that is ruled by love. His kingdom that is a kingdom of service. And the greatest in the kingdom, the king. He's the king because he served the greatest. He laid down his life. He came not to be ministered unto, but to give his life a ransom and to serve. And every day in the kingdom serves. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the anointed king, sovereign ruler of all mankind. We wait with anticipation your return and claim it. Thank you for being the priest, the reconciler of mankind. Any that may not know the Lord, may they see he is the only reconciliation of God. Thank you that you're revealed to mankind of the 